So a Fox News alert, Bernie Sanders is headed into South Carolina with confidence after an overwhelming win in Nevada. And it is reshaping the 2020 Democratic field as we speak. Sanders winning a majority of Hispanic caucus goers in Nevada and coming in second to Joe Biden with black voters. The socialist senator says this latest victory shows he can beat President Trump in states like Nevada and even the Republican stronghold of Texas, barnstorming that state over the weekend. Watch. Don't tell anybody, because these folks get very, very agitated and nervous. We're going to win here in Texas. And in November, we're going to defeat Trump here in Texas. Meanwhile, President Trump weighed in on a potential Sanders matchup, telling reporters, quote, I actually think he would be tougher than most of the other candidates because he is like me, but I have a much bigger base, end quote. Joining me now, Kellyanne Conway, counselor to President Trump. Good to see you, Kellyanne. I want Thank to start you, with what Bernie Sanders says. He says that the latest victory shows he can beat President Trump in states like Nevada and Texas. What do you say? Well, he can't. But I can't blame him for saying because electability is the mother's milk of the Democratic nomination process this time. They've all claimed they're the ones who could beat Donald Trump. It fueled Joe Biden for months and still people said, well, you don't even know what state you're in. And you're now known as Hunter Biden's father more than Barack Obama's vice president. Uh, then Bloomberg was going to be infallible, indomitable, invincible. And he made the cardinal mistake of playing on the same turf as everyone else and taking to that debate stage. Probably the worst business decision Mike Bloomberg has ever made was participating in that debate. He had the entire airwaves to himself and this air of invincibility and electability. And now it's Bernie Sanders saying, I'm the electable one. Yeah. Uh, the electability is no match for electricity, though. And the president has that. And he also has the progress report. You have President Trump presiding over the most successful, robust economy in modern time. And you have Bernie Sanders criticizing President Trump in that economy and complimenting Fidel Castro of Cuba. So and, and you're the, talking, the, the contrast will be clear. You're talking about that 60 Minutes interview with Anderson Cooper last night where he was saying, well, you don't want to emulate everything that the communists did. He was pointing out a couple things that he felt like worked. And we'll get into Truly that remarkable. a little bit later this hour. He shocked a lot of people saying that. Look, um, I, I often don't do this because we usually get into the politics, but I want to set that aside um, because the Dow now has just hit a point at this day where it is down by more than a thousand points. And the president, I want to point out, months ago, back in late January, I believe it was, uh, put together a task force, and he was on this rather early. Coronavirus continues now spreading outside of China, Kellyanne. Spike of infections now in Italy, South Korea, and Iran. And we're told by our neighbors here in the building, Fox Business, that this is putting some weight, some pressure on investors right now. What is the White House currently doing? I know you've asked for some emergency funds. Well, the president took decisive action early, an unprecedented uh, stoppage of travel going into and coming out of China into the U.S., which is pretty remarkable. And we continue to offer our help to China and to the World Health Organization because we have the best health care system in the, in the world in terms of our, our resources, our knowledge, and we're there to help. Uh, the president is also, he and his administration, the CDC, HHS, and others, have continued to take very robust action working with our local and state responders. Uh, you see these flights coming out of uh, first the Wuhan province of Americans who were there and now these uh, individual Americans who were on a cruise in Japan and they are being quarantined so that it, it will contain any spread of the coronavirus here. I think the markets, frankly, Harris, are reacting to the fact that Italy now has about 150 uh, confirmed published cases and a handful of deaths, which is tragic. So you're seeing it outside mm -hmm. of Korea and China. But this president will continue to work on that. In fact, um, this task force is one thing, but the president himself has been so fully engaged on the issue from the beginning. We also have um, daily calls and policy meetings about this just to stay on top of this public health crisis. But look, this is what our HHS and CDC do. This is what the Centers for Disease Control do. They're there to make sure that to the extent we can, we can keep the public informed and protected. And the safety and security and health of our people is the number one priority of the president. He's delivered on that. You know, and while we're talking again, the Dow and the red down by more than a thousand points. We're not at that point. And I, I don't want people to 
to overreact to when we bring our attention to that. They're right. just numbers that we don't normally see. It would have to fall by 7% of the previous day's trading amount for them to put in those breakers on trading. So we're not, we're not near that. But I do want to put a fine point on the fact that we are at a place where worldwide now there's concern. And I was reading, Kellyanne, uh, the CDC is an important part about this, but that China wouldn't let our people in for a while to even help them out. But well, we have been asking China um, to receive our help, that we are here to help. We've offered mm -hmm. it. President Trump talked to President Xi several times, as you know, that was made public. And we are here to help, and we are here to help the World Health Organization as well. Uh, but there's so much uncertainty, and that's why the market is responding in part thusly. There's, we just don't know everything about this uh, coronavirus. Obviously, it's different than other viruses. I mean, I will say uh, that the, everybody knows, but it's worth repeating, the common flu and, of course, pneumonia will, unfortunately, sadly, take the lives of many Americans this year and already have this flu season. But that is something that we know at least how to manage and protect ourselves against. But we're doing everything we can, and right. the president is briefed on this daily. Okay. Kellyanne, I appreciate you walking away from politics and handling a little bit of breaking news with me. It's important. It is very important. And, and the numbers that you're talking about of the flu, very important as well. We've been reporting it here on Outnumbered Over Time. I, I am going to jump back into politics with you for just a moment. Axios is reporting that the administration has put together a list of officials who may be working to undermine the president. Quote, the Trump White House and its allies over the past 18 months assembled detailed lists of disloyal government officials to oust and trusted pro-Trump people to replace them. What's the White House reaction on that reporting? Well, first, that refers to a meeting from January of 2019, so 13 months ago, that I actually participated in. I was in that meeting, so I differ a little bit with the details as they've been reported. I think the most important list to quote put together is of people who are able and willing and qualified to fill unfilled positions in this government at the highest mid and mid levels. Uh, that's the most important list are people who want to work to promote the agenda and want to work on behalf of this country. We all take an oath to the Constitution and we work for the country. But we should not have people in government who are undermining uh, the president's agenda. The president got elected because his issues, his ideas prevailed and the woman he beat, hers failed. And uh, I even saw in some of those testimonies, I would never question somebody's patriotism, never. But I do question their relevance. People there saying, well, I think it should be this, or my presumption was that, or my view is this. You want your views to become policy. You need to put your name on the ballot and become president of the United States. But there are so many unfilled jobs, so many wonderful people who want to be considered for those jobs. And let me be fair. There were people who maybe were on some of those lists who did not pass. President said after he was acquitted in the Senate and the impeachment trial, and that was that there might be some payback for people who had gone against him. Uh, and I think that that's where this criticism is coming from. I can't speak for Axios, but when people look at that report, uh, they just go back to the president's words. Just a couple seconds to, to fill that out, and we'll move sure. on. Sure. The payback is actually coming through the nomination of Bernie Sanders. I'd like to thank Adam Schiff and Nancy Pelosi All and right. Chuck Schumer and the rest of them. And I'd like to thank the Never Trumpers for delivering Bernie Sanders as the possible nominee now. And it's all because of how they spent their time and your money as taxpayers. We will end it there. Kellyanne Conway, thank you very much for your time today, particularly the information on the coronavirus fighting. Thank you, Harris. Thank you. We're watching it. Thank you.